on accounts of Edward Mordrake. Who? Edward Mordrake, aristocrat who lived in the middle 1800s. He's heir to all kinds of titles. Could have been a duke or a lord or some shit. Things have been different. Things are never different. <laughs> of noble birth. Edward was a young man with fine attainments. He was a scholar, he was a poet, musician of rare ability. So what was wrong with him? He had another face on the back of his head, hideous as a devil. No one else could hear what it said, but it whispered to Edward incessantly of things only spoken of in hell. tried to kill it. Many times, in many ways, but it wouldn't die. So what happened to him? He went mad. His family had him committed at a crazy house at Bedlam. Truth be told, they were only too happy to have the family freak banished from sight. In the crazy house, he wrote poetry, worked on an unfinished opera. Anything to keep his mind off the demon whisperings, but he never got any relief. It was telling him to do things, commanding him. One night, Edward escaped asylum. And he ended up where we all do at the freak show. They build him as the two-faced prince, and he'd show off all the refined skills he'd learned as the scion of one of England's grand families. And then he'd take a bow. And he was happy. He'd found a home with others like himself. There was no one like Edward. But he wasn't happy. One Halloween night, Edward snipped. He murdered every freak in the troop. Then he hung himself. Legend has it that even in death, the demon face was smiling. So, we don't perform on Halloween night out of respect? Out of fear, darling. If any freak performs on Halloween, they summon the spirit of Edward Mordrake and his demon half-face. Once he appears, he never leaves alone. That whispering face will choose one more freak to take with him back to hell. What a bunch of bunk. What are you trying to scare them for? It's not bunk. It's true. I can swear to it. In 32, when I was with Barnum, they made us perform on Halloween. Well, something visited the circus grounds that night, because next morning, Clyde Handershot, the astounding human cannonball, all three feet, four inches of him, was found hanging in his caravan. Yep, his head twisted clean around, his dead eyes staring backwards, and a smile on his face just like Edward Mordrake's second face. 